first Métis were children of indigenous women and European fur traders in the Red River area, now known as Manitoba. It dates back to as early as 1973 during the Alexander Mackenzie expedition. The Métis people developed their own language called Michif, which is a unique blend of French and the Cree language that is still used today. Roughly 33% of all Canada's Aboriginal population is Métis. Métis means mixed. The Métis Nation Blue Infinity Flag is the oldest continuous used flag in Canada and it represents the mixing of two cultures. Métis were often called flower beadwork people due to their combination of French floral embroidery mixed with Aboriginal porcupine quilt work. Métis are well known for their finger woven sash, which is referred to as l'assumption sash, and it is the most recognizable symbol of Métis heritage. A sash was often used as a belt, tow rope, tump line, or even as a sewing kit. They're made of wool. Louis Riel was a Canadian politician, a founder of the province of Manitoba, and a political leader of the Métis people. He led two resistance movements against the government of Canada and its first Prime Minister, John A. Macdonald. Riel sought to defend Métis rights and identity as the Northwest Territories came progressively under the Canadian sphere of influence. Louis Riel Day is on November 16th. The Métis Nation of British Columbia was founded in 1996 and is still going strong today. First of all, thank you for uh, being part of the Northeast Métis Storytelling Project. Uh, this project is geared towards uh, sharing the stories of elders and sharing their wisdoms, their wisdom and teachings. So uh, with that in mind, uh, thank you for taking the time to come and be with us. Okay. You're welcome. So let's start off with um, introducing both of you. Can I start uh, with your name first and last and your name first and last? Go ahead. What well, my mid first name? Blanche Gladier. Okay. Last name and William Gladier. Okay. And uh, tell me about uh, your first names. Were you named after someone? I was or named after my godmother. She, her name was Blanche. So she, I was named after her. Okay. And you, Ellen? I was named after my grandpa. Your grandpa. Okay. And um, let's talk about your individual family uh, last names. My mind was Desiree. Okay. And do you know any background behind that last name? Not really, no. No? No. And that's from your mom's side or your dad's my side? My dad. Okay. And you, William? Glad you. Okay. And do you know uh, which side that came from, mom or dad? Uh, dad. Dad. And do you, any, do you know any history of the Glad you last name? Because they were glad all the time. Oh, Bill. <laughs> No time to be funny here. <laughs> this is the perfect time to be funny. But aside from that, is there any history or anything that that exists? No, not that I know. I'm just glad you. It's all I know. Okay. Um, now, did you guys have any nicknames uh, growing up? I don't share mine. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Blanche. And you, William? I had one. Bully. Bully? Bully, yeah. Bully? I was a bully. Oh, man, that's maybe not a good one, but okay. Uh, all right, and what about uh, now? Let's move on to your lineage. Can Blanche, maybe we'll start with uh, your parents and your grandparents. Where were they from and where did they come from? My mom was from Kayla Lake. Her name was Helen Belcourt, and Joe Desiree was from Sturgeon Lake. Okay. And my grandparents, I think they were from uh, Good Fair, Alberta. It's called. At, um, Muggler Belcor and Jesse Belcor, Clarice Belcor. Okay. That was on my mom's side. On my dad's side was Ambrose Bill, Desiree and uh, Denise. Uh, sorry. I can't find her name. That's Clarice okay. Belcor. Clarice. Okay. Belcor. And now, did they ever get to live in Chetwin or no? No. Okay. Oh, my grandparents did. My mom and dad. My dad's parents lived here for a while. Gotcha. But not your mom's uh, parents. No, my parents, my mom's parents passed away. Okay. No, no, they didn't, didn't get a chance to see them. I just seen my grandpa. I didn't see my grandma at all. And you, William, um, where did your uh, parents and grandparents come from? Mm, they were originally from Reward and High Prairie, McLennan, in that area. Okay. <clears throat> and that's your parents? Uh, my parents, yes. And what about your grandparents? My grandparents, uh, Originated from the same same area. Yeah. And did they get to live in Chetwin, either of them? Just, just my parents. Just your parents? My grandparents I didn't see. 
I mean, uh, grandfathers, I didn't see, I just seen their grandmas. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, let's talk about siblings. Blanche, did you, do you have, or did you, did you have any siblings? I have seven, three boys and four girls. Three boys and three girls. There were seven of us. And where did you fit into that? In the middle. I was, middle? no, no, Lawrence. I was the third one from the girls. So the fourth one. Fourth mm -hmm. oldest? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah, it was fourth oldest. And uh, what was that like? Was it difficult it's or okay. you found it okay? Yeah, we all got along. We do our chores. We did, it was good. Okay. And what about you, William? Do you have or did you have any siblings? Yeah, I had 10. Oh, man. A big family. Six boys and six girls. And where did you fit into that? Uh, the 10 kids, were you oldest, youngest, were you? I was the middle. Middle? Yeah. Oh, and how did you like being the middle child? I was uh, treated the same as everybody else. I, I was okay. Good. Okay. And uh, now let's talk about um, children. Did you guys have any uh, children yourselves? Yes, we've got four. We were supposed to be five. We lost one. Sorry to hear that. Three boys, three, two girls and 13 grandchildren, wow. and four great-great-grandkids. We do have great-great-grandkids. Mm -hmm. Four of them, three boys and one girl. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow, big family, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big family. <clears throat> Did you guys have any other significant people in your lives uh, growing up, like any friends or neighbors that you recall, or maybe like, like uncles? Yeah. Up? Yeah. Really? Just my family. Mostly your family? It's my family. Until we moved to Chetwin. We had a lot of neighbors then. And what about you, uh, William? Uh, probably about the same. Like, uh, my brothers and sisters were my closest friends when I was growing up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so now let's start with you, Blanche. What community did you uh, come from as far as like where did you spend your childhood? Like, where did you grow up? In Alberta. Alberta? And uh, the Bolt area there, yeah. And what was that like? It was nice. Dad was a foreman in a sawmill and kind of loving, and we had a farm. It was nice there. Yeah, yeah we were Metis in the night. It's Metis. Perfect. Yeah, yeah but perfect. we live in a little community. In a what, sorry? Community. Oh, in a Metis community? No, no. It was just. Oh, know, just a regular community? Just mixed. Yeah, it was really nice. What about you, William? Did you, uh, where did you grow up? Well, I grew up uh, as uh, up to 10 year old. I, I stayed in, the, we lived in a settlement colony. Where was that? In Alberta. What was it called again, sorry? Kathleen, Alberta. Okay. And then after that, you said you were only there until you were 10 years old? Yeah. And then where did you guys go? We moved to Highbury when, uh, we grew up the rest of our time there. We went to a Catholic school. Yep, in High Prayer, Alberta. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. And uh, William, are you Métis or non-status? Métis. Métis, okay. And um, do you guys speak, uh, or which culture group are you from? Like Cree, Dene, Beaver? Cree. Cree? Both of you or just uh, Blanche? Cree. Both of you are Cree, okay, good. Um, now, do you guys remember any stories that your parents would have told you about when you were born? Like the hospital or anything? Like that? I was born in the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Beaver Lodge Hospital, yeah. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was born in a house. In a house? Oh, no, a house in, out in the country. Oh, wow. It was, do you recall any stories from I that? Don't, I don't remember that, but... <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't remember it, but maybe your parents maybe told you it was a difficult or was it an easy one? We used to drive by the house and mom told me oh, you were born in this house. You know. Oh, that's so, okay. No, little log house. Wow, that's awesome that you got to see that. And um, let's talk about maybe some childhood memories when you were growing up. Um, we'll, start, we'll start with Blanche. Um, what do you remember about your you know, years as a kid? What would you do? So I'd make our own toys. We make our own toys. We didn't couldn't afford new toys, anything for dad to buy. Yeah. We just he works only just for support us. 
what kind of toys did you make? Well, we make every little thing we can think of. We didn't know what toys looked like because we never seen any and we were small. But we did make some for ourselves, like little doll house, especially playing the mud, mud pies. <laughs> we have to learn to, to create toys for ourselves to be able to play outside with each other. I, my, me and my grand, my uh, siblings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't have any friends. We just had my family. But we made our own toys. Still sounds like fun. What about you, William? What do you remember? Do you have any f memories from your childhood as a kid growing up? Yeah, we played outside a lot. <clears throat> we played hockey, yeah, right. ball, ride horses. We had oh, horses then. Ride horses. Yeah. And uh, we spent more, most of our time outside playing. No room to play inside. Any time we stay inside, there's no weather was bad, right? Had to do reading and whatever. We didn't have toys of our own because, like she said, we had to make our own toys. <laughs> now, horses, was that a thing among both of your families? Did yeah. you know? We had a horses too. We go for buggy rides and snow ride, you know, for sleigh in the winter time. Yeah, we did have that. I just forgot about it. <laughs> That's okay. But you enjoyed actually riding them even as a kid, William, or, yeah. or just playing with them? I just played with horses. And, well, like I said, we used to play hockey a lot, and football, baseball in the summer. And in the winter, we played hockey. But um, have you gone back recently, or maybe in the last few years, to visit where you grew up? No. I went back once, yeah. just to see what it's like. It's all bush where we lived. And what's it? it? You're saying it's all bush now? Yeah. Well, we grew in and there's nothing there now. Your parents' plans, would, I think you were saying that your dad worked at a mill. Is that correct, growing up? Yes. Okay. And uh, what did your mom do or did your mom... Uh, mom did was... How, uh, <coughs> homemaker. She just stayed home, looked after the garden, and we had a cow. Yep. She's busy with the cow milk and the cow. We had one cow. And that's all I remember was one cow. I mean, I remember her making butter. She was a busy woman. Look after us, seven kids. Yeah, seven kids. That'll keep you busy. Yeah. And uh, what about you, William? What did your parents do uh, for work? My dad worked in the railroad. <coughs> <clears throat> and Ron stayed home and looked after the kids and did all the cooking. There was a lot of cooking to be done, so we were a big family. That's, good. that's all I remember. <laughs> okay. And um, what was your first language spoken at home? Cree. Cree. Same with mine, Cree. Cree, okay. And uh, did you at that time, so that's how, that's where you learned it and that's where you basically spoke it from a young age? Yes. <coughs> I still speak Cree. Good. And um, where did you go? Did you guys go to school? Or did, like when you were growing up? I went to residential school. Residential school? Okay. Sounds good. Three years we went there, two and a half years. Then my brother came to rescue us because of what was happening there with me. To rescue us, we brought us home, we went to the public school, and then we moved over here. Good chat. Yeah, in 57, we moved here to run away from all that. I don't know why dad had to run away from all that, but we did. And you, William? I went to a Catholic school in High Prairie. High Prairie, okay. And then did you uh, go to high school as well? No, I, I didn't even. I only went to grade seven. Grade seven? Failed grade seven twice, so I figured that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And um, how were, maybe Blanche, just if, if you're okay to share that, um, how was your experience at school? Which if, squad? Which well, maybe both. So is there any chance? So, school wasn't so bad, but it's just, <sighs> was the way we were treated. 
had long hair going there and they cut it up to like boy's hair, you know, really short. And that really bothered me. And then cleaning up with tooth, toothbrush and steps, you know, we just little girls cleaning up tooth, toothbrushes. It was, it was something I didn't experience at home, but there it was. Abuse, a lot of abuse. Our little girls were being abused. Yeah. And the public school was so much racism. That's why we left Alberta to that. Then we came here. It was worst here. Yeah, it was lots of racism in the school here. So I quit in grade five. Grade five. The teacher we had was racist, really racist. Every native kid there quit that year. It was too bad. It was really, he was really. We just couldn't do nothing right for it in his eyes. But we want living. We're still here. Yep. Yeah. We were strong. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Um, and what about you, William? What was school like for you? There's a lot of good memories. And you know how it is. Kids are kids. Are kids always yeah. bullies in the school. But like I was one too. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. We had a, a part to play in that. I didn't have the memories. We had. I had a lot of good memories in school. <coughs> Did you? Yeah. Excuse me. There's lots. I had good friends. Yeah. But some kids were bad. Eh? Call us. All kinds of. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. Your family life. Um, so we already talked about uh, where you guys fit as far as the seven kids for Blanche and then ten children for William. Um, but was there maybe like a specific role that you played in your family? Like, were you in charge of uh, uh, washing dishes? Things? Dishes were your responsibility. I had mine with dishes. Mm. To this day, I'm still, <laughs> but I'm getting old. I don't want to do any more dishes. <laughs> I have to do them now. Oh, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was doing the dishes and cleaning up me and my other sister. And was there a specific reason why? Is it because you liked it or? No, that That's was just... my duty to do that. That was your duty to do Okay. What about you, William? I had good experience with that to uh, do chores at home. Like we had to cut firewood and haul water and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. We had to do, pull our weight at home, so. Um, did you guys, when you were younger, did you work to support the family? No. No, I didn't. But after I quit school, I went to work. Okay. I think we'll get into that after. Um, who do you think uh, influenced you the most? Like your mom, your dad, or maybe your grandparents or a sibling, perhaps? Both, for me. Yeah. Mom and dad, yeah. And why would you say they influenced you the most? Well, I always look at my mom as a woman that likes to do everything for the family. Eh? She'll sew our clothes. I tried to get into that and I didn't like it. And then she cook. she's always cooking, always. I don't. I used to un, don't understand it, but she's always kept company coming. She'll have food on the table, and I tried that, but I didn't like it. Fair enough. And what about your dad? My dad was a hardworking man until he got to BC and got into an alcohol. He became an alcoholic and a gambler. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, my but my dad was hard work, and I used to see him work outside, chop wood, and do things. But when he came to BC, it all changed. And uh, what about you, William? My mom and dad are a good influence in my life. Yeah, they, why would you say that? They treat us very equally, like, and uh, they work hard to, to bring us up. Now, do you find yourselves, either of you, doing things in a particular way because that's the way your parents taught you or that's the way you simply watch them do things? Yeah, making bannock. I have to make bannock. Kids will ask me, where's the bannock? So I have to make some bannock. And do you make it how your mom taught you? Yes. Okay. And was there a specific way that she made it? or? Well, she used to make it the, tri uh, the, the way they made it. There was flour, lard, water, and bacon powder. But I don't use lard anymore. Okay. I don't want to use that anymore. It's too much calorie, too much fat in it. And why do you think they use it to give it more taste? Yeah, it's more taste, yeah. You use milk now? Milk and mayo. <laughs> uh, and I didn't want to give out my recipe. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. 
<laughs> are there any other things that you find yourself doing because that sorry that you learned along the way that you cleaning up clean the house i was always i'm always cleaning because we always taught to clean up after ourselves make our bed so we all have to do it good so yeah that's good what about you william did you take after anything from your parents well not really it's i learned all my as i was growing up how to do stuff and i seen them do things certain way but sometimes it isn't the right way <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true Fair but enough. uh i just went on and picked up whatever i had to do as a family have any traditions that uh you hang on to still from your parents no once you're saying that your mom was always cooking mm -hmm. um aside from banning did she teach you any other traditional recipes that you still enjoy cooking today no, no, I can't remember. We were all, she's always teaching us to me how to make cakes by scratch. But I don't, still to this day, I don't. No, I do, not really. Okay. Well, and did you learn any cooking from your mom? Yeah, a few, few recipes. I, I, I watch her do the cooking. From there, I learned how to, how to do it and what she does. And, and he's a good cook now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can still do a little cooking. <laughs> what do you cook? I just cook beans. Beans and bannock. <laughs> <laughs> Blanche, you're the you're the one that gets to try it. What else does the man make? Oh he he ribs, he'd cook with ribs and soup, but he always trying to he wants to make fish soup and I don't like it. He cooks soup, really good soup. Do you recall any big changes or upheavals in your family life? Not really, no. No? Nothing? Oh, those are big changes with the, <sighs> the way things are in the world, eh? Talks about maybe some difficult times in your life. Do you remember some difficult times in your life, though? None that I can remember. Uh, I didn't go to real difficult times. And you, Blanche? Losing my parents, yeah. I did one time and I lost a little boy and we lost a son. It was difficult for us as we were growing up. We had two little boys. We lost one when he was three months old. And that was difficult for me. Yeah. And then my little grandson, after my youngest boy was born, he lost his little boy. Yeah, that was the difficult, those things, times for me. I'm sorry to hear that. I guess you did already also talk about changing schools and how that was difficult. That was well. difficult, those things. Yeah. We never thought sure. of that difficult time changing schools. We just, that was natural for us. We just did it. Anyway. Yeah, we just did it. Can you guys tell us a little bit about when you met and when you fell in love? How, what was that like? Well, I fell in love. <laughs> but where, when, how? <laughs> oh, that's, that's hard to. Really? Well, I was working at this restaurant. I was 15, I was working in the restaurant. Okay, and here in Chetwin? Yeah, as a waitress and a, a kitchen helper. Okay, which restaurant back then? That was Rondell's Cafe. There was an old restaurant, that cafe. That restaurant is by the graveside now. Oh, okay. okay. So museum. Yeah. Museum. museum. Okay. And that's where, where, that's where I met him. And that's where you met, and what was that like? Did he uh, approach you, or you just kind of knew that he came in? I just seen him come in. I wait. I waited on him, and he, it was pitch dark. He walked me home. You know, I was never scared of the dark. Now I am. Oh yeah, we walked from, you know, where the blue sky is. Blue sky. Kapai by the Prince, old Prince of Center. Oh, okay, yeah. From there to where we live now. We used to live in that little book colony there. In Wabi uh, Crescent. Oh, before Mosin that. Plans. Before that, yeah. Gotcha. And what did you say, Bill? It was before that. It was at the airport. Where the airport right. is now, there used to be houses along there. Gotcha. Oh. So he walked you home, and what was that walk like? Just normal, like a friend. It didn't bother me. <laughs> 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 Nobody ever tell me anything about falling in love. And I, to, to have a, a, a person in my life, eh? I wasn't taught that. All I learned was from the nuns that men were no good to us. And... Uh, was it over time that you, you know, you guys ended up yeah, liking each other? Yeah, we started going out together and then we ended up together. Fell in love there at the 
restaurant, I guess. Well, there you go. Did you guys end up getting married down the road? That's a long story. <laughs> but that's why we're here for long here. stories. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> we had two kids at see the first little boy, the oldest one, and then we had the second one. That's when I passed away. Then I had the little girl. And then we're living in, uh, should I tell them? Tell them what you have to tell them. Okay. And the Catholic priest came to my house, told me that if I don't get married right now, it is Friday night, six o'clock, my two little ones are going to die at 12, at midnight. And uh, my parents always tell us to listen to the priest because he hears from God, eh? Oh man, running around there. Everybody's helping us, running around to get married. That was like a shotgun wedding, but it wasn't. It was heartbreaking to get married that day because we were going to get married at the time, but we, I had to get married right away because my little guy, my two little ones are going to die at midnight. It was really hard. I had the whole com community helping us to get married. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. I'm sorry. It is terrible. Did you guys ever find out why that was ever said to you like that? Like, Well, it's, it's, it's like a curse, say, if you don't get married or... or right, right, but why was it that they said to you that your kids would then be in jeopardy? Did you guys ever... So I lost one already. We lost one and we'll probably lose another one if we don't get married, you know, that... When everybody's crying, you ever see everybody crying at the wedding, trying to get us get married before midnight? That was the hardest. And then I found out I went to the Catholic Church, but I couldn't talk to the priest because he was really sick. Yeah, everybody had to listen to him, what he says. Wow. That was hard. That would have been tough. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, that is quite the story. Wow, never heard of that. Um, and, um, so after that, did you guys have more children? Yeah, I had two more, a boy and a girl. Boy and a girl. Mm -hmm. And what was it like to raise children? Mm, it was hard for me because I didn't know how to be a mother. I wasn't taught to be a mother. Okay. But I did well with Bill's help. We did well. Yep. We raised our kids. Nobody took them away from me. Nobody raised them for us. We raised them ourselves, even though we were young. I was only, what, 17? He was 18, 19. We raised our kids. He worked and I stayed home. If he's not working, I go to work and he would keep the kids. What was it like raising children for you, Bill? Oh, it was a challenge. <laughs> Anyways, we pulled through and we worked together. And I had, we had to, had to work out. I worked out a lot away from home because there, was, there wasn't work in the community at the time. And I used to go for 10 days and four days off and back and forth for a few years. Where did you work? Mackenzie. Mackenzie, and what did you do there? At Wilston Lake, I was a hand faller. A uh, what, sorry? I was a hand faller. Hand faller? Yeah. Can you tell me what that would be for those of us who maybe didn't do that? Logging? No, logging. They don't hand fall anymore. They got bunchers, right? So, before power the saw. bunchers came. You used to use big power saws to cut wood. And what did you do, Blanche? You said you worked... Uh... Oh, I work in the restaurant the hotel. I used to be there. I used to be a cook in uh, cleaning rooms when he's at home. He babysit. He looks after the kids and I do the work. I worked to work 16 hours. <laughs> that was a long time. Then my little guy was six years old. He said, Mom, you got to quit this time. So I quit. Who would help you guys out while you were working to look after the kids? School or I guess when they were at school, you guys did, yeah, did the best to be off? Yeah. When they're at school, I could work. Yeah. I make sure I'm at home before they come home. You know, nobody taught us how to be parents, but we did it. I was really challenged for both of us. But... Yeah. Um. And what about, uh, let's talk about your community life now. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, your life in the community. Um, would you say that you were supported by your community? I'd say how we were supported by the community and they were nice people. Yeah. And they still are, the ones we know. How did they support you? Mm. By giving me a job to work. Well, it's okay. 
Oh, that's how they supported you. Just they just way. supported us. They uh, helped me get jobs, helped me get a job, and, and that's it. Helped me with my kids as they and they all in, uh, had sports. The kids, hockey, or oh, you, you name it, they all enter everything, and it costs money. Yeah, and they were helped out by the community through that too. My taking our boys to hockey, they to pick up my boy taking to hockey. My grandkids, I raised three grandkids. They helped me with all that. But I made it through. Bill, did you have anything else to add to that in terms of how they supported you? Yeah, the community supported me a lot. My uh, diagnosed cancer in my throat, because my voice is still kind of fuzzy. Anyways, they, they did their fundraising for me to be able to stay in a cancer lodge, in the lodge. So so she could be with me, and they were, I was able to. They were able to to uh, fund enough money to for us to stay there for seven weeks. So, and this was recently, right? Yeah. Okay. In earlier years, or even now, um, did you or do you have a specific role that you still play in your community? Like, do you guys volunteer, or are you on any boards? I was on the board in Princip Center. But after with the diagnosed cancer, I, I resigned because it was too much for me. Okay. So that was recently that you resigned when all this happened. But before you were on the board, and what would you do? Really nothing. I didn't even volunteer nothing. I don't know why I didn't. Okay. I just thought I was needed. <laughs> while you lived here and while you were raising a family, you know, do you recall any big changes uh, while the kids were little or anything like that? Or any... Well, we live in the Moxon Flats where the airport is. We yeah. have no running water, nothing, nothing. When he's at work, I have to do all the chopping, getting water, cook for the kids, keep the house warm. We lived in that little cabin, two bedroom cabin. And that was really changed for me when we moved into our house. We had running water, we had electricity, we had heat. That's right, because you guys were part of the, uh, the program back then. Yeah. That community helped us to get those homes too. That's right. It was Frank Oberly that got everything going. Yes. I forgot to mention him. Yeah. yeah. Nice. He got that going for us and we we moved in, we thought we we're moving into a I don't know, it was beautiful for us. Ranch, right? Ranch or something. It was just Ranch. beautiful. So I'm still living there. We're the only two of us that still live in that community. From the original yeah. um, first owners of the homes? Bill's sister in law. And us, wow. the two of us. How many years would that be now then? 50 years. We've been living there 50 years, eh? Yeah. 1971, we moved in. Have you guys ever thought about like moving or you just? We did that first thing on moving. Everybody was selling their homes. They asked, why don't you guys sell your homes at a good price? And I thought about it. No, my little ones helped me a lot. Oh. Don't sell it, mom. You said, this is our home. Yeah, this is our own seller, Mom. So I never did. I had buyers right away. There you go. Yeah, but I won't. 50 years. Wow. It's a long time, but... Traditions with uh, your mom teaching you uh, Bannock, but were there any other crafts or somebody else like outside of the family that had any traditions that... My sister did a lot of beading, making moccasins, okay. beads, uh, necklace. She did all that, my oldest sister, Florence, yeah. And did she teach you as well, or she was the only one? Well, you know? she would teach us, but we're not interested in it. <sighs> yeah. And did you pass any of that on to your kids, or were your kids in, inter interested in it now? My granddaughter is the youngest one. Uh, my daughter, the youngest. Uh, she's around, she just turned 19. She's been interested. She was starting digging. Now she's into making uh, ribbon skirts for herself. She's going to uh, jig. That's the only one I could think of. The other ones. No. Do you help her with it? No, because she lives in Fort St. John. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I bought her a sewing machine, but I guess her dad bought her one too. So, okay. yeah, I tried. We tried. What about your sons? Did they uh, take on any traditions or anything like that? Our sons? Yeah. No, not really. They just, they played a lot of sports. They went to school. They did, they, uh, they graduated. Yeah, both of them graduated. One of them is a police in the Camus, but he retired, Dean. You must know Dean. Yep. Yeah. 
you graduate, you retire. The village in Abbotsford working in construction. Okay. He tried loving, but it wasn't for him. No, right? No. Nowadays, no, I don't know. Right. No, they don't want to work in the bush nowadays, young people. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and what about uh, any other relatives? Um, did you guys admire any other relatives for their uh, skills or their crafts? Bill's sister is a uh, jack of all trades. She makes anything. She'll beat anything you ask her. She'll make outfits, ribbon dresses, you know, things like that. Because she, her mom was a seamstress, so she followed her mom's teaching. She's really good at it, everything. Yeah. And who else would be there? Hmm. What about on your side? Was there anyone on your side that had any, like, crafts or skills that they carried on from family tradition? It's my sister. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. No, not that I know of. Anybody else other than your sister, Bill, that you remember? Well, she just mentioned my sister. Yeah, I was saying know. anybody else on yeah. your side? Yeah, my brother Danny, he's pretty good at it. But uh, making moose hides, he does uh, smoke, you know, like traditional smoked meat and stuff like this, and hunt. He's a good hunter. I, I do a lot, of, a lot of hunting too. So. Oh, you do, eh? Have you always, like growing up, or what would you hunt? Moose and whatever. Whatever I can poach. <laughs> <laughs> I oh I have a grandson Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, okay. he's a good hunter, fisher. Oh, he he live outdoors. He he's a really good at it. So Bill passed that on to him. He used to oh, teach right. teach the boys how to hunt and. Have you gone hunting with him? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. What was the best thing you ever got? Oh, uh, we got a moose. Oh, big moose. Probably yeah. the best. No, no, inf other than your parents and your grandparents, did you have any like influential elders that um, maybe you, you were you were intrigued by what they did or you know you just struck a good friendship with them? I yes, sir. I can't remember. He probably you my, know? my grandparents. Yeah. They uh, tell stories about hunting and trapping and. And I got, I got to learn how to hunt and trap from that. So. I should say they tell like to tell stories. At night, we did tell us stories, eh? Who, who, what, your grandparents? Yes. My grandma was good at that. Did you do that with your kids? No. Well, I guess when they're growing up, I did tell them stories, but... Was it some of the stories that were passed down to you, or were they new ones? New ones. What about you, Bill? Did you pass down any of those stories to your kids? No, oh, not really. I didn't pass down. I just passed down the, the traditional part of it to, to, to hunt and fish and trap. And they taught us to respect one another. Mm -hmm. Respect one another, he said. Never call anybody down. Always help them. We try that. Really, yeah. Um. What were the different um, seasons like for your family? Like, for example, what was winter like for you guys? Sliding in the family, we'd go for snow sliding. And when we were small, we used to go for horse buggies, you know. We had horses, we'd go for a ride in the snow, with Dad. And as I grew up and my kids, they would go sliding. We just play outside and make snowman. I guess I really didn't, we didn't have any toys. Did you guys do any uh, berry picking? And yes. some of the inter interviews, uh, a lot of people were saying they went berry picking a lot. Yeah, we used to pick a lot of berries, but now we quit picking, say about five years. Yeah, I'm scared to... of the bears. <laughs> As a kid, I was growing up, I used to pick lots of berries. You had to pick or else. You know, and this one time I went picking, I, I up to build a pail with the grass and yeah. And berries on top. <laughs> oh man! I got a little lazy. <laughs> and mom, my mom goes and spills the berries into the other one's order. Did not ever get it. <laughs> Fair enough. 
And uh, you guys said you stopped about five years ago because of the bears. Did you guys have any encounters with bears? He did. Oh, you did. They yeah. went picking hunting with Albert Fleck. Yeah. Oh, okay. And what happened? Well, <clears throat> a grizzly bear, we, we see them actually. It's, it's, was growling. They must have killed her, so we just turned around and just left it because we don't want to mess with that. <laughs> no. For any maybe uh, young people that will watch this, any future generations, or maybe you know grandkids of yours, what would what message would you want to give them if in years from now they watch this? Always be kind to one another. Feed person if they're hungry, don't turn them down. Always have your door open, hospitality, you know, but you gotta be careful now with this generation now. But always love one another and forgive. What about you, Bill? I guess love and forgive is uh, the, the most important part of life and, and be hospitable people that are in need. That would be an end. Okay. Well, guys, thanks again for helping us with the project. And uh, we really appreciate all the stories and all the information.